Well, hallelujah. Welcome everybody this uh, Memorial Day weekend. And I uh, hope everybody's been blessed so far this week. I know that it's been rainy yesterday and today. And, but tomorrow's supposed to be a beautiful day. And, and that is Memorial Day the 30th. And so uh, we're just going to go on, go to the Lord in song and worship. Your 
Yeah, that's one of my favorite songs. We uh, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have some singers in here step up to the plate or behind the mic. <laughs> I, as I told one time, one of our uh, members before he went to be the Lord, uh, he'd want to give testimony, and I'd walk up to him. He's sitting about where you was, Craig, and. I'd hit a start to have my mm -hmm, can't, uh, I don't I don't hold on my I said it will not shock you, it will not burn you, it will not hurt you. <coughs> and he would not touch a mic. <laughs> All right. Everybody that's here got your Bible and those that are watching, get that Bible, get out of your comfort zone, hold that Bible up. And cause the Lord is watching. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I have what it says I have. And I can do what it says I can do. Do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught. Today I'll be taught. The Word of God. The Word of God. I boldly confess. I confess. My mind is alert. My mind is alert. Your heart is receiving. My heart is receiving. About to receive. About to receive. Incorruptible. Incorruptible. Indestructible. Indestructible. Everlasting. Everlasting. Ever living seed. Ever living seed. Ever living seed. Of the word of God. Of the word of God. I'll never be slain. I'll never be slain. Never, never, never. Never, never, never. I'll never be slain. I'll never be slain. In Jesus' In name. Jesus name. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Today's message is about Memorial Day, and uh, and uh, you be turning in Genesis chapter nine. Um, Memorial, if you look it up in the Strong's Concordance or not Strong's, but in uh, uh, Webster's Dictionary, means serving to preserve the memory of a person or event. It can be a monument, a record, a statement of facts. And May 30th is formally observed as a legal holiday in most states of the United, in the United States in remembrance of the war that, uh, those that lost their life in war. And when you consider this, that used, uh, people who used to do uh, decorations at, at uh, cemeteries and everything to remember their loved ones. And today more people are being cremated and uh, oftentimes families will have part of a person's ashes put in uh, necklaces or jewelry or little keepsake mementos. and and uh, as well as in the urns, and sometimes they will spread the ashes, sometimes they will bury the urn in a certain place that's been requested. And uh, so I've seen a lot of different things. And, you know, over the past few years, we've seen a lot of uh, monuments being torn down or taken down. And uh, the complainers probably have never, ever had any teaching correctly about history. And it's a shame because uh, without that, you know, we, we often fail to understand. Now, with that said, uh, how many knows that in the Bible, there is, I think, over 65 different memorials that it lists that we're to remember? Y'all didn't know that? I didn't know. That. So this is going to be an interesting day. <coughs> now, as I said, I was going to have you turn to Genesis chapter 9. Now, look at me. Look at me. Everybody look at me. Don't be reading yet. Uh, when you see a rainbow, what do you think of? God's cross. God's cross. I think of Noah and them when the flood comes. <laughs> All right. Who's that? Who's that? Uh, who's the rainbow for? Us. Isn't it? No. It's not for us. It is not for us. It is for God to remind Him of His promise to us. Let's read it right here. Genesis chapter nine, verse thirteen. Let's get 12 because that, that makes it more plain. And God said, this is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. 
I do set my bow, talking about the rainbow, in the cloud. It shall be a token for a covenant of a covenant between me and the earth. It shall come to pass, verse 14, when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. Verse 15, and I will remember, I will, God speaking, remember my covenant, which is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. Verse 16, and the bow shall be in the cloud, and I, who God, will look upon it, that I, who God, may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. Now, God said that. I'd always, now, and you talk about learning something new. When I was back in the office last night, I read that, and then I read it again, and I thought, I had never seen it that way. God was making a covenant with earth and all humanity, every living creature, that every time that there is a rainbow, God looks down and he sees that rainbow and it reminds him, I'll never flood the earth again. We look at it as God's covenant that he won't never do it. It is a, it is a, a memorial to us, but it's a reminder to God. Now, had you ever thought about it like that? I had never seen it like it. And, and that's why when we look at it, it isn't God's reminder to us. It's a reminder to him. And uh, as I said, there's many memorials that we could do. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just want to thank you, Lord, for this beautiful, wonderful day that you've given us. Lord God, we've got many people that is that I've talked to this week and have heard of that is going through sickness. I thank you right now for health being restored in their life, Lord God. We give you praise and honor and glory. And Lord, as we study today your word, help us to grasp how that all through the Bible, there is memorials that has been given that is be for us to be remind one another of. And Lord, we thank you, Lord God. And Lord, that you've given us such a great word to live by. And so Lord, just have your way with your people. Those that are watching, those that are here, Lord God. The Holy Spirit be with each and every one. And we ask this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, with that said, I want you to go to Exodus chapter 12. Now, Exodus chapter 12 was wrote somewhere or happened somewhere around 1445 B.C. So it was way before Jesus was born. And uh, uh, it has not quit. In other words, what it has done is transformed. Now, in Exodus chapter 12, let's look verses 11 through 14. And thus shall you eat, talking about eat it, talking about the lamb that they uh, were to roast. And with your loins skirted, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. And I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the house where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. 
And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinary ordinance forever. In other words, God says, I don't want you to forget this Passover, that it is to be passed from generation to generation, and it is an ordinance forever. Now we have Easter Sunday, which we celebrate as Passover. And uh, uh, we celebrated a different reason than they did. But you've got to consider that when we typically, if we was, was to take um, an a, or ask a question and get an answer in the churches, let's say here in America, how many do you think when you ask about the Passover would say, well, it began with the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Or how many would go back and say, well, it began 1,445 years before Jesus was born? And so if you add it all together, it's been close to 3,000 and 65 years that there has been a Passover. Now that has been a whole lot. That is a memorial right there. Now, go to Luke chapter 22. We're going to look at New Testament. Luke chapter 22. I'm going to read you verses 8 and 19 through 20. In verse 8, Jesus, he's speaking to Peter and John. He sent Peter and John saying, Go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. Okay. In other words, 1,400 and about 75 years had passed and they were getting ready to still do Passover. In verses 19 and 20, and Jesus, and he took bread, gave thanks, break it, and gave unto them, I'm talking about the 12 disciples, and said, this is my body, which is given for you this do in remembrance of me. Verse 20. Likewise also the cup after supper saying, which was actually the fourth cup. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. Hmm. Now, he said, he, he's telling them, I want you to do this. Now, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. This has been probably about 20 or 30 years after Jesus ascended up to heaven, after he had been crucified, after he had been resurrected. And Paul is with the Corinthians. Chapter 11, 1 Corinthians. And we'll be reading verses 23 through 26. In verse 23, he says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Verse 24, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take it, this is my body, 
which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. In other words, do this as a memorial. Do this as a memorial. And, and then he goes on, verse 25, after the same manner also, he took the cup which he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now, if you notice, it says as oft. It would, there would not be one thing wrong if we took communion every Sunday. As oft as we do it, we're remembering, we're making it a memorial of what Jesus Christ did on the cross at Calvary. How he paid by the stripes for our healing, how he was crucified for our sins, and how he is resurrected and seat, sitting with the Father right now. That's why you can never take communion enough. And, and as I was doing this last night, I thought, if it wasn't 10.30 at night, I would run over to Walmart and I'd get some bread juice and, and uh, uh, some unleavened bread or crackers, and we'd do communion. We haven't done it in a while, but we need to do it as oft as we do it. You can do it at home. As a matter of fact, when you do it, it helps you to be healed because when you read Isaiah 53 and 1 Peter 2.24, it's by his stripes you are healed and by his stripes you were healed. Old Testament is you are, New Testament is you were, which means it doesn't happen. We just yet to receive it. And that's why when we do communion, when we do it in remembrance, when we make it a memorial of what Christ Jesus has done, then it helps us to receive healing in our body. I mean, he paid for our sins. We got to remember that. We've been redeemed. We've been purchased. And uh, so, you know, that's why... Uh, uh, Perry Stone wrote a book. I got it. As a matter of fact, I got the little uh, <coughs> container that uh, uh, you put a couple of wafers in. It's enough to do communion like for, uh, say, if I go to the hospital to visit someone, I can take the juice and the container and two little glass cups and a little leather pouch so that we could have communion, which is in remembrance. Why did Jesus die for us? Number one, for our sins. Number two, for our healing. And if and we do that, it's as more. It's a refreshment. It 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 brings back to memory of things. Now I want you to go back to Matthew chapter twenty six. We're going to look at a person that did one thing. And Jesus said it'll be a memorial for her forever. In Matthew chapter 26, we'll just grab all the verses here. Uh, we're going to read but verse 13, but let's get verse 7. And uh, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he said it meat. In other words, as Jesus is eating supper, this woman come in. Now, according to studies, an alabaster box of this anointment was a year's wage to purchase. So it wasn't something that you just could go out and buy. You had to really, really save up to have the money to purchase. It was extremely expensive. But when his disciples, don't you just love the disciples? 
They just human like us. We look at things in the natural and don't understand not one thing in the spiritual. When, they, when his disciples saw it, they had indignation saying, to what purpose is this waste? For this ornament might have been sold for much and given to the poor. Oh, that sounds so good, doesn't it? And yet this woman was doing something that the disciples just still could not grasp in their understanding. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble you the woman? For she have brought a good work upon me. Verse 11, For you have the poor always with you, but me you have not always. Verse 12, For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. It did not register with the disciples. Did not register, not one bit. But this woman, it registered. She knew what God was getting ready to do. Verse 13, verily. In other words, it's just one verily. So he's saying, now listen. I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached, in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman hath done be told for memorial of her. Jesus said what this woman did almost 2,000 years ago will be remembered of her today. Because she did something that the disciples would not and did not do. She anointed Jesus for his death and burial. They couldn't comprehend that he was getting ready to pay the price. <laughs> oh, yeah. She gave it unselfishly. She gave something that was extremely expensive. When she anointed Jesus' head and anointed his feet, while the disciples complained, well, I could, we could use that money for something else. Well, we could have probably took that money and bought enough bread and uh, loaves of bread and fish and had another camp meeting a few miles out from the city. Instead of feeding 4,000 men and 5,000 men, while well, we might have been able to feed 10,000 men. Of course, they didn't count the women and children, so there's probably 20,000 and 40,000 people, possibly that many. I want you to go back in the Old Testament to Joshua chapter 4. Joshua chapter 4, after Deuteronomy and before Judges. Now Joshua is getting ready to lead the Hebrew people across the Jordan River into the Promised Land. They had been wandering in the wilderness for 40 years and and guess what? The River Jordan at this time was in flood stage. And so just like the New River, when it's in flood stage, you're not going to walk across it. So God had to do another miracle. He parted the Jordan River. Only when the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant when their feet touched the water as they was getting ready to step in the flooding Jordan River, God parted the water and they crossed over on dry, dry ground. Now, while they were crossing in the middle, <coughs> let's look at verse uh, 6 and 7, that this may be a sign. Well, verse 5. 
And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the, ark of the Lord our, your God into the midst of the Jordan, and take, up, take you up every man all of you a stone upon his shoulder, according to the number of tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you, that when your, when your children asking their fathers in time to come, saying, what mean ye by these stones? Then you shall answer them that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it passed over Jordan, the waters of Jordan were cut off and these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel for ever. There you go to chap uh, same chapter, verse 20. And those 12 stones which they took out of Jordan did Joshua pitch in Gilgal. And he spake unto the children of Israel, saying, When your children shall ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean these stones? Then you shall let your children know, saying, Israel came over the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan from before you until you were passed over as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up from before us until we were gone over. Then all the people of earth, all the people of earth might know the hand of the Lord that is mighty, that you might fear the Lord your God forever. In other words, they took in 12 stones and they put them in a pile as a mark. And I thought about this, about all the monuments around the United States, especially like in Virginia, North Carolina, that has been taken down because it offended somebody without anybody understanding, or those people probably have no, no knowledge of history. I know that uh, down in Salisbury, uh, right in the center of, uh, uh, oh, I can't think which, uh, one of the main roads that goes right through town. It's not Main Street, but it's uh, Old Boxville Road is right close to the hospital, there was like a, a big old bronze statue of an angel holding a vet, uh, you know, a veteran that had been wounded or had died in battle, it was holding. And because of people that are ignorant in history. They finally petitioned long enough, this has been going on for like the last 10 years, finally petitioned up that they took it down. Now we've, we've seen that and it's a beautiful. But didn't they take it somewhere else and put it up? They did? No, it, it, it's took down. Even though it's on private property. Because a certain person owned this little little piece of property in between the four legs. Oh. And uh, just like these stones, they're a reminder. If those stones are removed, then where is the reminder? When I first started driving a truck for Dixon Lumber Company many years ago, there's a lot of times we have a sawmill at Yanceville and I'd go to Yanceville and have to take a load of chips down to Montecure, which is, you'd have to go, uh, Yanceville's right close to uh, uh, Blow Danville and you end up down below Chapel Hill, almost, uh, well, you'd be actually below uh, Raleigh. And going down through there, I remember in town, in Chapel Hill and, and going through, they would be big old, uh, you know, the, the big old signs that told about different military personnel, like during the Civil War and during this or during that, as a memorial, as a marker of something that took place 
at that particular spot or at that a local location. And I thought, how, how shameful is it that if you take all those memorials down, all those markers, all those signs, all those monuments, how will you be able to tell your children, well, this is what, what happened here? Or this is what happened there? Or this is somebody that made a difference or tried to make a difference. You know, uh, this marker was for the world, just like as it said there, that all the people of earth, that means us here in the United States, even though we're not over there, to see those 12 stones. We can read it here that it is a memorial of God fulfilling his word of taking his people into the promised land. How many knows that uh, with less than 300 yards, there's two historical places right here? Now, I know that my children and wife know but for those that don't, if you go just about 300 yards, you'll come to Justice Road. It turns, goes, shoots right over the bank. Right there on the far, will be on the right far left corner, is the Old Grayson Post Office. It's got the marker. And directly across from where you cut down Justice Road is the old first Grayson County Courthouse and Clerk of Office. It was built in 1834 and was in use till 1850. Now, most people look at it as being the old courthouse up there at the intersection of 21 and 58 in Independence. That is a historical courthouse. Uh, Dr. Cap, he has uh, renovated the this old courthouse and made it into a, his home. Oh, that's where he lives. That's where he lives. He lives in. But it has a plaque on yep. the brick, the original brick, just like the old post office has the original brick with a plaque that's inserted. In. And you know, uh, with all this said and done, when you think of Memorial Day, what time period do you think of? What time period? Do you think of World War One, World War II, Korean War, uh, the crisis with Cuba? Do you think of the Vietnam War, the Persian Gulf War, Civil War? See, we got so many things that, and when we really think about it, we just don't comprehend that from almost the beginning of time, God has had memorials made for humanity to remember. You know, my, I've got uh, uh, one of my ancestors, Samuel Brewer. He was a minister up in uh, the Independence area, or Grayson County area. He also fought in the Civil War. Uh, I've had... Uh, you know, my grandpa was in the World War II Navy. Uh, uncle that was in uh, the military as a paratrooper during the late fifties, early sixties. Uh, had uh, his son, my cousin, was in the military during the. Uh, about 75 through 79, and then uh, our oldest 
uh, son was in the Navy. Uh, bad thing about him was, is that uh, he had uh, trained and qualified for radio repair school, which he had to go out to San Diego to uh, be trained for. And once he completed the course and came back to Norfolk, uh, he didn't get no break. Persian Gulf War had just broke out. They loaded all of them up on the uh, USS Enterprise and straight to the Persian Gulf War they went. No tryout, no nothing. And and so that was a, that was a, I think uh, that's one of the reasons why he didn't stick with the name. Or with the name? He said the most beautiful place he's seen when he got to see Israel. He said it was one of the most beautiful yeah. places he had ever seen. And, uh, so and seen then, him. you know, uh, I've got a cousin that uh, uh, put in about 35 years in the Army. He just has retired uh, back, well, actually, it would have been back uh, first part of the year. And now my grandson, uh, he's a Marine and uh, gonna be stationed out at Camp Pendleton. So he's on their side, or will be on their side of America shortly. He's gotta come do a little car collecting. <laughs> uh, and uh, so, but you remember in Psalms 23 when David wrote, about, uh, he said that thy rod and thy staff are with me, thy comfort me, and everything. And that made me think of something. And I, and I even got in a rush and I didn't even think of it, but I've got, a, I've got a walking stick over at the house. And it's been engraved and everything on it. But back in, probably in the days of, begin with Abraham, maybe even earlier than Abraham, they would carry a walking stick. And when certain events would take place in their life, they would take and carve out on that walking stick of certain, those events. And then when they passed on, yes, it was given to the, their eldest son or the their child that was still living and they would pass it on. And so a walking stick, a rod could be passed on for generation <laughs> after generation as a reminder of what their great, 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 great grandparents and their grandparents and who knows what went on. Today, uh, we can, it, it's hard to tell about what we've been through because we either got pictures or we have our cell phones, tablets, iPads, and computers. And if it's not on that, then we, because word of mouth has really become almost non-existent as to what we've went through. And, uh, you know, it's something that we need to take time and share with our children and our grandchildren and great-grandchildren and our great-great-grandchildren and maybe even our great-great-great-grandchildren. Now, it depends on how long you plan to live and how early you got started. <laughs> It's kind of like when I was a young girl, we'd come by the Sydney Allen house. I thought it was a castle. Until I grew up and left home, I did not know that Sydney, uh, Sydney Allen. Allen was kin to us. Yeah. And, and I see, we didn't know until after we got married. Yeah. See, my, grand, so my, my grandparents. Uh, my, on my, about my mom's side, my grandma yeah, was related to yeah. the Phelps yeah. that was Phelps detective. Yeah. That ended up having the shootout at the courthouse with the Allen family. Yeah. But you so know, they were feuding. We didn't know nothing about it. Well, 
like mama did my thing. And uh, so, you know, we learned a lot. Didn't tell me till I got drunk. But people don't yeah. share. Yeah. It's just like my great, great grandpa on my mom's side. <coughs> I don't know what his original name is. All I know is that he was born yeah. in 1845 in Shanghai, China. Yeah. And he came to the United States and he lived a hundred years and is buried at somewhere down at Antioch Baptist Church, going down 89 towards Mount Airy. He died in 1945. He lived a hundred years. My grandma and grandpa would never discuss anything because he was Chinese. Yeah. Yes, that was a no-no back in their time. And you can look at my grandpa and you can see that he had Chinese. That's the only reason probably I can't grow no beard. I, it, took me, it took me 20 years to get a couple of chest tires and I thought, wow. <laughs> Still don't have none. I might have three more than what I did when I was 20. I just, I think it's a Chinese thing, you know, you just, I can't grow a beard. I just grow sp uh, spots here and there. I grow a mustache, but it's the wrong flavor now. And I can't color it because if I did, I don't never live down. I still never live down what uh, my wife experimented with me many, many years ago. And I shaved it off and I've never put no, nothing on it since. That was a mistake. <laughs> Hallelujah. People don't forget things like that. <laughs> Brother T.G. Shell, he was a, a, a minister we had to do revival. And he got up and he said, it's amazing what a $5 bottle of black shoe polish would do. His hair was jet yeah, black. black. <laughs> and he was probably about 70 in yeah. his 70s then, but he preached. Uh, love that man. He, he was he was something else, and uh, you know. We fail to look at things that go wrong. And that's why when tomorrow, as we honor the men and women who gave their all so that we could have freedom and life, we have to remember also that there's one that gave his life so that we could have eternal life, and that's Jesus Christ. I know that uh, that the Catholic predominantly use shows Jesus on the cross, and yeah, I do. We have a. a uh, a statue that was given to the church probably 20, 25 years ago of Jesus on the cross. And Jesus isn't on the cross. He isn't dead. He'll never be on another cross. But right now he's sitting right beside the Father at the own right hand in heaven. And he's waiting for the Father to say, son, go get my people. And we look, we can look at that. That's a memorial of what he did for us so that we can have life everlasting. I don't look at it as he's dead or being crucified. No, that's done over with. That's just a marker. That's just symbolic of what he went through so that we can be free, so that we can receive our healing. There again, you get in the Word and you'll see that there was a lot of memorials made. Jacob made one at Bethel because he wrestled with God. And finally, God dislocated his hip. And, God, and, and, and Jacob made a memorial right there, right there for from that point on, Jacob never walked normal again. I think he walked with a limp because God touched his hip 
so that he would let go of it. And that's when God says, hey, I'm going to change your name from Jacob to Israel. And Jacob made that monument. You go over to Jerusalem and you can find Mount Calvary and you'll find the tomb that is empty. And people every year from all around the world will make trips over to see that. It's a memorial. We have this tomorrow as a memorial for those that have fought for America and America's freedom. But Jesus fought for everyone Amen. worldwide. And it's still in effect today. Amen. So I ask you, those that are here, those that are watching, if you've never got your heart right with the Lord, this is the greatest day ever to get your heart right. Amen. Because we don't have to worry about death. Because if I take my last breath here, the next one's in the presence of God Almighty. I'm going to leave this old earthen place. I'm going to leave this old earthy body and I'm going to have a glorified body that will never ever have to fight sickness will never ever have to worry about aches and pains will never ever get tired and we'll be in a place that is we would call paradise. Amen. Heaven is real. Amen. But you got to make that decision. You got to believe it in your heart, confess who you're mad. So let's just pray this simple prayer. Those here, those that are watching. I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father God. I ask, Lord, that you forgive me of all my sins. And, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit that from this day on I can live for you. And, Lord, as those that have prayed this, that, Lord God, that you will just send people that will encourage them in your word, that they'll get in to the house of God for the word is being taught so they can grow closer to you, build a relationship with you, Lord God, and to live for you for eternity. And so, Lord, I thank you, and Lord, I pray a blessing upon each and every one. Be with them, watch over them, and use them for your honor and glory. And I ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember Tuesday nights and Wednesday nights, 630 that we'll be having Bible study. We've been doing a study the last two weeks on being in him, in whom. And if you can understand that when you're in Christ Jesus, you got the spirit of life in you. Amen. You can't help but to win. So join us. Also be put on YouTube later on this evening. And of course, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, right after uh, we do the service, it goes on YouTube. Share the word. Pass it around. Got questions? Don't hesitate. Get in touch with me. And God bless. Have a great Memorial Day.